Uh, today we are going to continue our discussion uh, regarding the uh, uh, seismic refraction uh, method. We are having overview to understand this uh, tool which we are using in uh, seismic data processing for static correction which to refresh your, your memory which depends on uh, determining the uh, time to be deducted from each uh, trace to uh, have reference uh, time origin below the interface between the bedrock and the wizard zone. Now, in case we have three layer case at certain point further than the first crossover distance we have another crossover distance which here in this case will be XC2 we denote by this one by XC1 and then the one there was XC2 okay also the slope also, the slope of the, of the new segment represents the velocity. It's, it's the inverse of the velocity of the third layer. Uh, the intercept time which results from extrapolating the segment to meet the time axis at zero distance also is here and is used to define the uh, depth to the second interface. In definition, by a similar argument, a third layer introduces a third branch into the travel time distance diagram. The slope is a reciprocal of V3, which is the velocity of the uh, new uh, layer. And the intercept is a composite of the layer 1 and layer 2 delay time. Now we have two delay time. Delay time in the first layer, and then we have another delay time for the second layer and for you to remember delay time uh, is there something going so you, you smile uh, so often without any reason okay okay so we can see that the uh, intercept time for the second interface equals this one represent the delay time for the uh, first layer and this one represent the delay time for the second layer uh, as you see now from the slope we understand we, we got the, the information about the velocities v1 v2 and v3 and also we have the, the depth to the first interface and now we can we have T2 which is intercept time so the only unknown here is Z2 okay so we have one equation which with single unknown so we can solve this equation because from algebra if you remember the number of unknowns uh, describe the minimum number of equations to be used to solve or to obtain this unknown. So if I have two unknowns, I should have two equations. If I have three unknowns, I, I should have at least three equations. I know I'm, I'm not going to take you to linear algebra and to inversion because I, uh, I understand you should study something like that. Because you can say wh what I'm saying minimum means supposing that we have no error. So if you have three unknowns and you want to find this, the solution, you will need at least three equations. But if we have error in our observations, so then we have to get more equations than the unknowns to have an idea 
uh, or estimates about the error for each of these unknown. Sorry, this uh, is mislocated. We'll return to it uh, later. Now, all what we, are, we were interested in is the horizontal layer interface. So what if, if it is flat but dipping? Now the interface is dipping. What is the situation now? The situation now that I have this segment, this distance, and this distance which defines the delay time, they are not the same, they are not equal. So the equations we use for the horizontal case should be changed. Because here we have HD representing the, the, thick, the thickness beneath the down dip, uh, shooting down dip uh, point, and another thickness here, uh, uh, HU, which uh, define shooting up dip, uh, up dip uh, experiment. Uh, in, at this point, we have to return, if you remember, to contours and dip I guess now we, 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 we will not return to defining what is, uh, sorry, the strike and what is the dip, okay? So, now we have dipping interface, so we have strike direction and we have dip direction. The dip direction is perpendicular to the strike direction and we have also the dip angle, which is the angle between the horizontal plane and the plane of the layer. So, is there any possibility to define the, the dipping interface if I'm shooting from one direction? The answer, no. If, if I'm not using reverse shooting, like in this case, I will not have any idea about the dipping layer. It will seem like the horizontal layer case. So I need to have forward and reverse shooting to have an idea about or to, to detect the dipping of the layer. But this is not the final point as on the Earth's surface, I'm not sure which is the, which is the direction, uh, what is the direction of strike. So, sometimes, accidentally, if I am having bad luck, I may shoot a long strike. In this case, if I'm shooting a long strike, what is the, the, what is the result for my travel time distance can, can body? voluntarily answer or should I pick? If I am shooting along the strike direction. No? Correct. Very good. Why? Why Why I'm saying very good to Azim, you hail him, but when I said very good to Aqil, nobody hail or... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There is a, some sort of discrimination here. <laughs> okay, so when I'm uh, shooting along the strike, I, 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 I have no chance to detect the dipping. Also, if I am shooting at a direction with certain angle, not, not the, the perpendicular one, because as we, we know, the dip direction is perpendicular to the strike. So suppose I am I'm not in the, in the perpendicular direction to the strike. I will, I will see dipping. 
But in this case, the dip I will measure, the dip angle I will measure, is called, is called, is called, Nisa. This dip is called, is termed as, I am not in the perpendicular direction, in some other direction and measuring dip. What is the name of this dip? Okay. No, we call we call this dip we call apparent dip because it's not the true dip. We have always in our geophysical and geological uh, work we have apparent like apparent resistivity and true resistivity. What is the difference? Apparent it's not the true one. It's the result of many constituent, the, the, many, uh, the effects of many uh, rock materials that the, the, the electric field pass and then recorded by the potential electrode. But the true one we obtain by applying inversion. Also in our case, if I am not in the direction perpendicular to the strike, I am not having the true dip. I am having, I see dipping, okay, but I'm, I'm seeing what is called apparent dip. So the best practice to determine uh, dipping is to use maybe two perpendicular lines, each of, each of which is forward and reverse. So if I am having two apparent dips, I can, from these two apparent tips, determine the true tips. Uh, sorry, from these two apparent tips, tips to determine the true dip. Okay? Because I, I will have two angles, and then you can you can use projection, you can use st uh, stereographic or orthographic projection to determine the true dip or any small uh, code of a piece of code of program can be used to determine the uh, true angle of the so here we have the changes we have the angle of dip which here is alpha the angle of dip here is the angle between the dipping plane and the horizontal plane Okay, so this alpha, which is also equal to this one. Why? Because this plane and this plane are parallel, so this, this angle equals to this angle. Now, we want to find the change in our uh, time estimate this this plane if I am recording at, at this point R dash so this is the horizontal layer case and here I have the the the, uh, the segment from R dash to R that I'm needing to define its value. So to define the value from Pythagoras Pythagoras uh, triangle, we have this part is called x sine theta, and then uh, using also uh, for this x sine theta for this triangle, S R uh, can see uh, some point, and now for the small triangle. R, R dash, and say I, we have this R, R dash segments equal X sine alpha divided by cosine IC. Okay? So, in case of shooting in down dip direction, I should add this 
value and shoot in shooting uh, in down dip direction I should subtract this value. So uh, uh, the time uh, now would, would be 2 HD divided by V1 cosine IC plus uh, X divided by V2 uh, 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 multiplied by cosine alpha minus sine alpha 10 IC plus X divided by V1 sine alpha cosine IC. Uh, then 2H D divided by V1 cosine IC uh, we have plus uh, V1 divided by uh, plus X divided by V1 cosine IC multiplied by V1 divided by V2 which is sine IC okay sine IC multiplied by cosine alpha It, uh, we obtain this by replacing tan IC by sine IC divided by cosine IC. Okay? So we have cosine alpha, cosine IC minus sine alpha, sine IC plus sine alpha. And then we Simplify the equation uh, further to have 2HD V1 cosine IC plus X divided by V1 cosine IC and then we have cosine alpha cosine IC sine IC the first term plus sine alpha cosine square IC Finally we end up with 2H, uh, 2 HD divided by V1 cosine IC and here this represent this uh, the addition this definition is the addition of two angles so we have X divided by V1 uh, sine IC plus alpha So in case of uh, up dip, this plus sine, uh, sine is reversed to minus. So how the travel time distance curve looks like when we are working in a dipping interface? As we agreed, the total time should be equal. The total time should be equal. So, what is the difference we have? The difference we have will be the slope. So, our slope now does not represent the velocity of the second delay. Okay? Why? Because I have a change in slope. This for one velocity and this for another velocity. In this case, what we call the, the velocity obtained from the slope here now can can you see? Can you say something? You should speak. Even if you if you if you uh, answered wrong, no problem. The velocity we obtain from the slope of the second segment. What we call this? Okay, we will leave this wing and go there. Azra'i. Okay. What what is the name of this velocity? Apparent velocity. Well done. Okay. So he's uh, exerting uh, 
a lot of effort without your knowledge. So take care of him. <laughs> okay, uh, I mean take care from him. He will. He wants to uh, to be to have good grade, and I hope he will. Do. Yes. So it's uh, it's actually if you if you even look at the at the text, you will see the the term apparent velocity there. So uh, no problem. So if you if you have single direction shooting. Okay, you have single direction shooting, shooting in forward only. So you you estimated the the velocity of direct waves. This is the true velocity. But if you are using single direction only, so the velocity of the refracted wave in this case we call it apparent velocity. Okay, because we are not sure whether we have dipping or not so that we are not sure this is a true velocity. This is very important for your understanding, should keep in your mind. Okay, and also what, what, uh, what, also, uh, what other things that also change, it is the intercept time. So we have two or three things change. The slope, the intercept time, and even the third thing, and if Sharawi, what is the third thing that change? Akmal, Tip. No, we are speaking here about the travel time distance gap. No, no, no. We, we, we said we have change in slope, which means velocity, change in intercept time. There is one other parameter that also change. D. Angle? No, dipping angle does not change. So if, if the, the dipping angle changes, so how, so how can I detect this uh, angle? Uh, no, the, the change is the crossover distance. Okay? So, in summary, you can say one needs reversed recording in opposite direction for resolution of dips, but this is not sufficient. So, this is not sufficient, as the dip we are, we are going to, uh, to have is a parent dip. We should have at least two uh, perpendicular or two lines with angle between them. The reciprocal times must be the same for reverse shot. The dipping refractor, refractor, refractor is indicated by different apparent velocity uh, in the two direction. Here we, define, we determine V2 and alpha from the two direction and also different intercept times. So apparent velocity is V apparent equal 1 divided by P, where P is usually and always will be determined in ray uh, tracing or ray seismic terms as ray parameters. And I told you before, the ray parameters like a name, name of the ray. So your name does not change during the course of your life, from your uh, born until to the end of your life. Okay? So, it's uh, the, the, the ray parameter is the slope of the travel time curve. 
The apparent velocities are measured directly from the observed travel time curve. The apparent velocity equal the velocity, the true velocity of the, of the refractor, if and only if we have horizontal layering. Otherwise, this is not true. For a dealing refractor, we have two velocities, two apparent velocities. The first one equal V1 divided by sine I C plus alpha, which is slower, and the up dip uh, is V up dip equal V1 divided by sine I C minus alpha which is uh, faster. Khairul uh, Radwan. Can you tell me why? Do you have any idea why why shooting from from the expression? Just look at the expression and tell me why this is slower and why this is faster. Just deduce from the expression. I'm waiting. Keep waiting. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, because of the of the denominator. Okay, for here we have larger angle, so the sign of larger, larger angle is greater than the sign of uh, smaller uh, angle. Thus, when, when this denominator is greater than this, so this one is less than this. Okay, it's simple, and, 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 and many, many things in, in life is, is simple if you have enough uh, concentration and also enough imagination. You should have imagination. Like Isaac Newton, when he was sitting in, in, in the garden and an apple uh, fell on his uh, head. Uh, myself and you may take the apple and, and eat it, and it's, it's over. But uh, uh, it seems the apple was, uh, was hard enough that it caused pain to his head to think what, what caused this uh, problem. And he came up, he come out with very important laws for gravitation that's still uh, valid until uh, now. Now, from the two reversed apparent velocities and the critical distance, and, uh, sorry, from the two apparent reverse uh, apparent velocities, IC and alpha are determined. We have IC plus alpha equals sine, arc sine V1 divided by V2, and IC minus alpha equal arc sine V1 divided by V up. So if we uh, add these two equations together, we can obtain IC equal minus sine minus 1 V1 uh, uh, divided by V2 plus arc sine V1 divided by VU. If we subtract the equations, we end up with the definition of the angle alpha, which is half the summation of arc sine in the down dip direction and the arc sign in the up dip direction. Obtaining IC, we can determine the refractor velocity using the relation that V2 equal V1 divided by sine IC. Finally, we want to determine the depths. Now, we, in, in horizontal case, we can identify the refractor with only one depth, but in, in this case, we need to define two depths, the one in the down dip direction and the other in the up dip direction. So, 
in the down deep direction h d equal v1 time d which is intercept time at the down deep direction divided by 2 cosine ic while the depth at the up deep uh, shooting direction equal v1 uh, times tu the intercept time divided by 2 cosine IC. Okay? Now we return to the misplaced slide. Apart from both horizontal interface and dipping interface, which we discuss both as a flat surfaces, the situation is that the surface itself is, does not uh, always uh, be flat, it sometimes become a regular surface. So the discussion we have till, until now is an approximation to the, to the actual situation. And now we are going to determine to map the actual change of depths. So we are going to determine depths beneath geophones. So one of the methods we are today we are going to speak about the delay time method and next time uh, we'll have the plus minus uh, method uh, and then we, we can say we have an overview of seismic uh, refraction to go forward for other steps. Now Excuse me. We have to say that the delay time method allows calculation of depths beneath each geophone. It requires a refracted arrival at each, at each geophone from opposite direction. This is important. Also, it requires offset, offset shoots, and we will know why cause of what is the so-called phantom uh, phantom refractor because in phantom refractor when we have uh, high undulation uh, phantom also uh, means uh, like 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 ghost or something something that you can you can feel its effect but you can't see it we call this uh, phantom and in earlier days, the, fa the um, F4 uh, 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 fighter jet F4 were, were called Phantom. Why? Because its speed was much higher than the speed of uh, sound. So you hear the sound of the of the jet, but you 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 didn't you don't see the jet itself because. When the sound, uh, when you hear the sound, the jet would be in, 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 in other place. Yes, and uh, I, I have this information because in, in Egypt we serve at the army. I was in air defense, uh, uh, so we, we used to monitor and to should de defend the, the territory from uh, attacking uh, planes. So we have some information. So. The phantom is so fast that you cannot, uh, if you are not seeing with, uh, with eye contact, if you depend on your, your hearing the, 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 uh, the plane or the jet, you will not, you, you will feel it's, uh, so we call phantom. Phantom because you, you hear the voice but you, didn't, you don't see the plane itself. Uh, also, data redund redundancy is important. Yeah, I, I need a lot of data, as many data as we, 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 we can obtain to, to fine tune our results. So now we don't have horizontal space, uh, so horizontal interface. We also have uh, undulating uh, surface something uh, uh, looks like ideal ground conditions. 
not like what we have uh, previously. So I'm, sh I'm shooting from A to B and also from B to A. I have geophone here at point B. Uh, the travel time from A to B should, should now be uh, well known to us. Uh, blindly, it's the depth at A divided by v, uh, V1 cosan I theta plus AP, which is X, divided by V2 minus depth at, at A also, this one, tan IC divided by V2 minus H at, uh, at B, tan IC, this segment, divided by V2 plus HB V1 cosine IC, the upgoing segment. So these are the components. Why it's, it's, it's uh, more than the components we have in uh, the horizontal uh, case? Because the uh, symmetry is now lost. So we can, we can say that this segment is equal to the other one. We cannot say that these segments is also equal to this. And also the depths at beneath A is not equal to the depths beneath B. So this represents the constituent from each of these uh, of this ray lenses separately because we lost symmetry. Okay? Sometimes in, in solving problem we assume symmetry to reduce the, the problem uh, space. So, now this is a time from A to B and we have two shooting virtually from B to P and from A to B. From A to B we have HA V1 cosine IC plus now we have from A to P only divided by V2 minus HA tan IC this segment divided by V2 minus depths at P tan IC divided by V2 plus depths at P divided by V1 cosine IC. The, the shooting, the time from the opposite direction is, is the same, but we remove HA and put uh, HP instead. And also we remove the distance from A to P and put uh, the distance uh, from uh, B to P instead. And, and, and we have to keep in mind that the, the P geophone must not be in the middle. It, 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 we, we are going to estimate for all of the geophones between, between A and B. So, the delay time T0 equal T from A to P plus T from P from B to P minus the total travel time from A to B. Okay? Excuse me? This is delay time. Okay, this is delay time at point P. Applying this, we, we have to put the times for, all, uh, for each one, and then arranging and summing up the uh, terms, we end up with T0 equal AP plus BP minus AB divided by V2 plus 
2 HP divided by V1 cosine I theta minus 2 HP tan I C divided by V2. If you look at the first term, you will realize that AP plus BP equal AB. So the denominator here, okay, AP plus BP equal AP, uh, sorry, AB. Okay? So the first term vanish because the denominator equal zero. So we end up with T null equal 2 HP V1 cosine IC minus 2 HB tan IC divided by V2. Okay? So now we already said uh, that. So we can use this relation to, to solve for HB, which is the depth beneath the geophone P. Actually, we can, we can do uh, refraction without the, the, the need of, uh, of computer. If you have some uh, programming skills or you can use MATLAB or, or Octave or C-Lab, you can uh, take these equations and all you need is to provide values and the, the code will solve and map the surface for you. Okay, so uh, now he takes HP uh, as common and then we have 1 divided by V1 cosine IC minus sine IC, which is sine IC by divided by cosine IC is 10 IC. And then uh, we have uh, uh, we have 2 HP uh, multiplied by V2. You know why, why V2 uh, is coming here in the first term? because we, we make the two denominator the same. Okay? So V2 here come to the uh, upper, uh, to the denominator of the first term, and V1 appears in the denominator of the second term. So all what he's trying to do is to simplify the, the relation. So we have uh, taken uh, V1 uh, as uh, common, we have 2 HB V1 times V2 divided by V1 minus, CI, uh, minus sine IC divided by V1 V2 cosine IC and also in the other direction V1 V2 uh, cosine IC. Thus, we have in this case T0 equal here we have sine IC uh, equal V1 uh, divided by V2, which is the inverse of this. So we substitute this with 1 divided by sine IC. One of the problem of the, the malfunction of the air condition is some of you are now going to sleep. <laughs> so try to refresh, refresh yourself, please. Okay, finally, we can just end our today discussion with this relation. Is it T null equal to HB cosine IC divided by V2 sine IC? Okay, we'll stop here uh, for today. And inshallah, we're going to uh, continue uh, Monday, uh, sorry, Tuesday. Okay, thank you.